let me tell you a story. When I was about five or six years old, I was at my grandmother's house and I popped in her VHS copy of the, in retrospect, pretty rubbish BBC adaptation of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Before the feature started, though, there were, as you can imagine, a handful of previews. And one of them was for another book-to-film adaptation, Jacob Have I Loved, starring a young Bridget Fonda. Like Jacob, grabbing after Esau's heel. You wish I'd never been born. Well, I can't help you with that. Help! It would never occur to you to help anyone. You're too busy grabbing what doesn't belong to you. Now, I've never read the book, and I don't care at all about the context. All I know is that there was an image in this little trailer that scared the little five-year-old me like nothing else ever has. Let's hold off for a second, though. What I've come to find incredibly interesting isn't the simple fact that I was scared, but the fact that this particular image, which I have purposely not shown you yet, has stayed with me ever since. This is something I've seen once, maybe twice in my entire life, and yet it's something that's been permanently stuck in my mind ever since I was a kid. And it was such an impactful image that when it does pop up in my head every now and again, I will, no joke, feel some tiny bit of that same wide-eyed five-year-old fear. I'm fairly certain all of you have some inkling of what I'm talking about. And just to clear up the context, I'm not talking about moments that you like or that you've thought about a couple times or even the memories you have of watching a film, despite the fact that those can be important in themselves. I'm talking about the small handful of images that have lasted without any real clear and fluffy explanation. The ones that have, for some reason or another, etched a tiny little corner of their own in the very back of your mind and that at random times you find yourself going back to again for reasons that are likely entirely unclear. And before we go any further, let me be completely upfront. There's no conclusion to this essay. I'm not pretending like I have anything remotely close to answers. All I have are ideas and questions. And if you feel at some point that you can shoot gaping holes through anything and everything that I say, then by all means, fire away, please. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I think that with that first memory I was talking about, the most obvious answer why it's lasted so long has everything to do with childhood. I'm sure it's not news to you at all that memories like this, or even just insignificant, seemingly low-impact moments, can and do have profound impacts on shaping who we are. So, I don't know, maybe that moment was one of the first times I was consciously, genuinely scared. I don't know, maybe that's why it stuck with me. But if we're gonna go with the whole fear-based thing, then this is obviously much more of an extreme example. Let me tell you another story. All right, princess, ready to launch. Tato, hold on. When I was 12 years old, I caught Hayao Miyazaki's Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind on TV one afternoon after school. And again, I, I don't know why, but one of the opening scenes of the movie actually just this shot right here has been stuck in the back of my mind ever since. I think, in a way, and with a bit of a stretch, you could almost apply that same fear-based reason as to why it stuck with me. And when I say fear, I'm, I'm not talking about jump scares or being frightened. What I mean is that Nausicaa was, in a very real way, like absolutely nothing I had ever seen before. For a kid raised on Star Wars and The Lion King, this was something so completely out of the realm of my imagination, something so new and strange and unusual. That's why I say fear. It's almost like an extension of that, that idea of the fear of the unknown. I didn't know what I saw. I just knew that I saw something. Now, granted, I could be taking that way too far. Maybe I was and probably still am just a sucker for pulpy fantasy stories and the film just happened to hit me at the right time. Or maybe not. All I know is that this image has been stuck in my head for over a decade. Looks like they're still fresh. You could easily look at those two examples and classify them under some sort of childhood development heading, and I doubt you'd be wrong, but I don't think for a second that this is something limited to childhood. Let me tell you a third story. Only just a few years ago, I was making my way through Kurosawa's catalog of films, and one of the first that I watched was his 1980 epic Kagemusha, which, if you haven't seen, I mean, good lord, you are really missing out. Briefly, the 
story revolves around an impersonator who's brought into a kingdom to secretly replace the dying rightful ruling warlord, and there's a scene about halfway through when the impersonator is introduced to the warlord's personal guards, and he displays his impersonation of the warlord to them. And his impersonation is so overwhelmingly convincing that the guards are not only shocked beyond belief, but quite literally bow down because they are so convinced he's the real deal. As I'm sure you've guessed, this is one of those moments for me that again, for reasons I just simply don't understand, has found its way into the back of my mind and has stayed there ever since. Again, I don't know why, I just know that I think about this moment more than almost any other. This is the most recent example for me, and it'll be interesting to see just how it plays and survives and even changes over the next, whatever, five or ten years. Because there's this other aspect we haven't yet touched on, and it has everything to do with the fact that memories are malleable. I purposely didn't show you that first image that scared the crap out of me all those years ago because, well. There's not a darn thing scary about it in the slightest. The interesting thing though is that my memory of this image, an image that still sends a shiver up my spine, looks really different than this. This is another idea you may be familiar with, that with enough time, memories can change, so much so that they actually wind up bearing little to no resemblance to the real thing itself. If that's true of normal memories, then there's no reason to think that it isn't true of our memories of films as well. Like I said, I'm not really leading to much of anything. I'm not intelligent or insufferable enough to give you some post-grad answer, and I'm also not going to give you some fluffy, schmaltzy, new age sentimentality. Films play a massive role in shaping who we are. We all know this. These are questions that I think go right along with it. Questions and thoughts and ideas that I myself will likely continue to ask and re-ask for years to come. Maybe you've thought about them too. If you haven't, well, then maybe I am blabbering on about nothing. But if you have, maybe that means I'm not too far off. Let me know. <laughs>